So what I'd like to look at in this video is the sync function. And what I'm particularly interested about in this sync function in this video is calculating the integral of the sync function over the real line. That is to say, calculating the integral from negative infinity to infinity of this curve, which is the sync function. Now, in order to do that, we have some problems. We can't just go about doing a particular u substitution, or we can't really integrate by parts here. All those little tricks don't really work. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to set up a new function which we will call f of t. Now f of t has an extra parameter namely t which does not appear in f of x. Now with this you'd think to yourself that we're making the problem more complicated here. And actually what I'm going to argue is that we're going to get the problem into a more manageable form and we're also going to get more results than just the one integral that we're interested in computing at t equals 1. Now one important definition to remember for this video is the definition of the Laplace transform which we will be applying to f of t. So with the Laplace transform, we will be applying it to f of t with respect to t, not with respect to x. And we're going to be able to get another function out of that, which we will have an easier time to integrate. So what we need to calculate is the following. So we have applied the Laplace transform to f of t, and we yield the double integral. Now we want to apply the Laplace transform first. So that means we're going to have to switch the order of integration, which we can do in this case. And that will yield us the following. Now. In order to do this, we can essentially take the 1 over x that is a part of the product in here, and we can pull it outside. So we're really only interested in integrating this part for the Laplace transform. I am not going to calculate the Laplace transform of sine of tx in this video but I will provide a link in the video description to a PDF that does show how to calculate it for those of you that are interested. After we end up doing that calculation, we yield this new function. which we can calculate the integral to with respect to dx now. This isn't an integral that we can calculate by standard means that will be taught in a basic integral calculus class, and we're actually going to apply a complex analysis method to it. So in order to apply complex analysis to this to yield their solution, we're going to have to set this up into the form of a contour integral. And that means the first step that we have to do is identify the simple poles of the function, i.e. where the function divides by zero, essentially. And we can do that by factoring the bottom of the fraction. When we factor the fraction here, we get x plus is times x minus is. That is to say, we have a pole located at plus is 
in a pole located at minus is. So we will now have to set up a contour to integrate with, with this function. Now, in order to do that, we first have to identify where our poles are. Now, one of our poles is going to be located here at IS. There we go, that's much better. So this is IS, and that's one pole of our function. And here's negative IS. That's the other pole of our function. Now we need to choose a contour to integrate over. The easiest contour to use for this is going to be a semicircular contour in the upper half of the complex plane. So it's essentially something kind of like this. And we're going to integrate over that in the positive orientation, which is going to be counterclockwise. So what we get here is a semicircle, a poorly drawn semicircle, albeit, of radius r. And we're going to want to make the radius r go into infinity. So that leaves us with one little question. What happens to the semicircular arc as r goes to infinity? Well, by the ML lemma, simple application, this part of the integral drops down to zero, and we're only left with this integral over the real line. So that means we can apply Cauchy's integral formula to this, and just do 2 pi i times the residue, uh, the pole is, which we will now do. So we're going to integrate over our contour C, which is this contour that I showed earlier. And now we can apply Cauchy's integral formula, and we get this. This is going to be the function that we're interested in Cauchy's formula. And we're going to be able to just do 2 pi i times the residue there. which is just going to be 2 pi times i times 1 over 2 is, which is going to equal pi over s. Now, what are we going to do with this little result here? This pi over s still has an s in it, and we need to get rid of it. Well. We took a, Lapla a, a, a we took a Laplace transform to get here, so logically speaking, we can take a loss plant a, an inverse Laplace transform to get back, which we will do. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of pi over s is equal to pi, and from that we can conclude the following. That is to say, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine of tx over x dx is equal to pi for all t greater than zero. Now let's take a look at this statement real quick so that we can justify it a little more. If t was zero, 
then this entire fraction would be zero and the integral would be zero. And that's certainly not equal to pi. And if t was negative, because sine is an odd function, we would be yielding negative pi for t less than zero. So we can ignore that for this result and we can conclude that it works for all t greater than zero. And that leads to a visually surprising conclusion, which is that for all t greater than zero, all of these functions shown here, all these different variants of the sinc function have the same area or integral from negative infinity to infinity. I guess I really shouldn't call it area because there are negative portions in here.